for joining me today. My name is Olivia Odero and I'm a licensed professional counselor and today we are going to go into the series that we've been in, the four-part series called A Thriving Mindset and we have been studying and investigating the life of Joseph, how he, he was able to thrive in the darkest of situations and you know more of his story can be found in the Bible. So just a little bit of a recap. So in the first video, in the first part, we talked about uh, just the possibility of thriving and that's how we came upon the story of Joseph, finding out that man like it's actually possible to thrive in the darkest of situations and so that set us out on this journey of investigating like what is it that joseph did how come he was able to thrive after all these situations and circumstances you know sold as a slave um in a foreign land and you know just undergoing a lot of misfortunate stuff happening in his life being imprisoned yet he was still able to thrive and survive. So the question of this investigation has been how was he able to do it? Because if, if he was able to do it, I mean, it's not like he has three heads. He is a human being like we are. So if he was able to crack the code in the midst of the darkest situations, then it showed that we would be able to. So that's how we started the investigation. So that was part one. Then part two, we went into his childhood, trying to figure out were there any building blocks, anything that was very significant that happened that would have shown us that, man, this is why Joseph was able to thrive because X, Y, Z happened in his childhood. But unfortunately, we found nothing. If anything, the investigation was even intensified because his childhood was messed up his childhood was so bad and if you want more information just go and watch that second part of this series then we went um last week we evaluated whether there were some spiritual experiences or practices that joseph was doing that made his mind be in that place where he was able to thrive but then once again there was nothing there was no answers like he wasn't practicing anything if anything the things he was doing was you know like at the end of his story kind of you know were like questioning like okay what did he mean by this i mean if, if you're curious about what i'm talking about just go to the bible and i mean his story is phenomenal and very intriguing so today is the last day of this series and i'm so excited because i think we have cracked the code i think i have found the solution of this code and uh, i'll be so glad to hear what you guys have to say after you finish watching this video so we'll actually be looking at joseph's identity like was he able to figure out his identity and therefore he was able to thrive because he understood his identity. So this was like the last part that I was like, probably this guy understood who he was and therefore he could, he could be like a boss even in a foreign land because he understood who he was. So this was like my last place that I wanted us to investigate. So join me and let's just see what was happening here. So first of all, it's very important, like as we start this journey on, on understanding identity, just understanding the meaning of identity. What does identity mean? So uh, I will use three uh, aspects, but first of all, I will use um, an object lesson. And um, you guys may be very familiar with this. This is an iPhone. So when we, as we are going through this process, of understanding identity, I'll come back to this object lesson. So first of all, when you look at any dictionary, the dictionaries that I looked at, they say identity is being able to distinguish, have distinguishable characteristics that can separate one thing from the other. So usually like when they're doing forensics, like they will look at your fingerprints, they will look at someone's hair, kind of like they're just trying to figure out what's the DNA, what is the distinguishing characteristics of person A from person B, therefore that gives them their identity. So they look at fingerprints and all that stuff, right? So how can we separate A from B? So we're going to use the iPhone because 
I wanted us to understand three aspects of identity using an iPhone so that we can apply them to Joseph's life and see if these things were what enabled him to understand who he was and therefore be able to thrive. So first of all, I want us to see what is it. I mean, we all know it's a phone, right? But we'll look at what is what we are looking at right now in terms of identity. What is it that we're looking at? Secondly, who is the maker? Who's the creator of this thing that we are looking at or we are, we are investigating? And then thirdly, what is the purpose? What is the function of this thing? So we, those are the three aspects we are going to go into. So the reason I want us to look at only these three aspects, there are many, many other ways to look at identity, but the reason I'm focusing on these three is one, when you understand what something is, then you don't misuse it. So for example, if we know that this is a phone, someone wants to use it for something else. Like they want to use it as a weapon, they want to use it as a food. You know, some kids eat phones, like they're chewing on phones. So when we understand what something is, it starts classifying its identity. We start knowing like, okay, this is this, it's not this. And then secondly, understanding who the creator of something is like what was his nature what was his mindset behind creating such a thing it helps us start even understanding the object more and then lastly when we understand the purpose of something it helps us use it effectively because when you understand that a phone is meant for communication then we don't use it as a decoration or something like that right you're like specific that this is for communication so all right let's go into it so when you look at an iPhone so I want you to go back to the time where there were no phones at all like before people started using phones and imagine someone is bringing to you this so they're bringing an iPhone and um, they ask you know you ask them what is that and so the first thing that they'll tell you like this is a phone for communication so you can use this to text you can use this to call you can use this for all these things because someone might look at this if they did not know about phones at all they can look at this and be like oh probably this is for decoration i can put it somewhere hang i don't know hang it somewhere or you know like i told you some children chew on this dogs try to eat people's phones so someone will be like, I don't know if it's like a bone or whatever, I don't know. Anyway, the more we classify, the more we start understanding what something is, then it helps us like, okay, this is what this is. We can't use it for any other, uh, any other purpose. It is meant for communication. And then other things that um, the creator decided to put in it to make it now an iPhone. So first of all, we've talked about what is that. Now we'll go into who the creator is. So when we talk about um, iPhones, the first person that pops into our mind, at least my mind, is this man right here, Steve Jobs. And even though there are other minds that were involved in creating the iPhone, he is the person, he's like the billboard a poster child of the iPhone. When you think of the iPhone, the iPad, the iMac, all those things, Steve Jobs comes to mind. So when you think of Steve Jobs, you know, you're still talking, you're still telling this person about the iPhone. You're like, okay, so this is the iPhone, it's meant for communication, and it's different from an Android because of X, Y, Z, and the maker is Steve Jobs. So the person is like, okay, so why is this important? So first of all, Steve Jobs, it's very important to understand the kind of mind he had when he was creating the, the iPhone. Like, how come, how come he, he, he brought us the iPhone? What was his purpose? So first of all, Steve Jobs is known as an innovator. Like, he constantly wanted to make something better, wanted to give people a better experience in whatever they were using or utilizing that were his products. So like when you look at the history of the iPhone, the iMac, the iPad, all that stuff, like every time he makes his pictures, he's like, this thing will make your life better. This thing will, you know, you won't, you won't have to go and get the newspaper. You can just read it 
at the comfort of your bed. You don't have to do X, Y, Z. So he's always trying to make life better. That's, that was his goal. He was always trying to make life better. So he was very innovative. Secondly, Steve Jobs was someone who wanted excellence in everything that he did. So this means that he would look for the best way possible to make something. I mean, that is why the iPhone is what it is. The iPhone is very thin. It's very light if you look at it. And you know, like even the cameras, um, the, the uh, operating system that they have, everything about an iPhone is enviable. So when Steve Jobs was making this, you know, he was coming from that place of excellence. He's like, I don't want to just make any ordinary thing. I want to make something that will, will be amazing. So you want to just have a better experience with it, but you will, you will be amazed by what you have. Like it will, it will be extremely good because of all the stuff that he has put in it. This, this will make more sense when we look at the purpose of the iPhone. So, and then thirdly, Steve Jobs was someone who related and cared about people's needs. And why do I say this? Because of how he made the iPhone. So first of all, the iPhone is known to be durable. Like when you see some of the ads that they show about the iPhone, it's like it can withstand any situation. Like you can, you can put it in water, it's water resistant. Um, it can be spilled on. If you have kids, they can chew on it. They can hit it, you know, have food all over it, but it will still work. They say it's very durable. So Steve Jobs understood that life can be messy. You want, you want a phone, but you know, you don't want to have to deal with like, okay, so since I'm going, um, I'm going to be around my kids, I can't use my phone. He understood we need our phone even when we're around kids. So how can I make this thing durable even in the, when people have all these situations they're going through? So he made the phone durable. Secondly, he understood that things get lost. People will want to steal information from phones. So he's like, how can I help people who are worried about this? So he made it in such a way that it is very secure. Like for, for the latest iPhone, like it has to see your face, the owner's face in order, in order to open up. So he enhanced its security because he understood the needs of people. And then he also uh, made it durable because he understood the lives of people. And then lastly, he also understood that, you know, we need a lot of reminders in the day and age we live in because there's so much business, so many things wanting our attention. So when you look at the iPhone, like they have made it in such a way it can remind you of like everything you need to be reminded of in life. Like, oh, you have an appointment here. Oh, order correct for this text you're about to send. Oh, your phone got lost. There's a map that, you know, you can detect and find your phone. Like there's just so many things that he built into the iPhone coming from a place of understanding what people needed. So these are very important things. To, to remember because they will help us understand why he made the iPhone or, or the purpose of the iPhone. So now we'll go into what is the purpose. Why did Steve Jobs make the iPhone? So when you go to their landing page on iPhone, they talk about how iPhone is meant to make your life easier. And true to its word, like what I've just talked about actually shows us that iPhone makes our life easier. It can give you all the reminders you need. You need to be woken up, you need to go to the gym, you need to meet with this person, you need to do X, Y, Z, you need to uh, remember what this happened, you know, all this stuff. So it's very um, efficient because it has all these reminders, helps you set all these routines, and there's so many, much, so many more things that I'm not even mentioning. It is very secure. Even if it's stolen, you can still keep your information secure and all that stuff. So all these things are meant to make our life easier. And then it's very durable. No matter how active or inactive our lives are, it, it can withstand any harsh conditions that it's put in. So all these things, like all these things get like pour in into the purpose of what he meant the iPhone to be supposed to make our life easier so 
like I said, we're using these three aspects to understand what identity is. We're coming back to Joseph's story. So I know the iPhone was amazing, understanding about the iPhone, but we're going to use it to understand if Joseph understood his identity. So remember, three aspects. What is this thing? What is this product? Two, who is the creator? What is the nature of the person who created this product? And then thirdly, what is the purpose that this product was made for? So we want to see using now the iPhone right here, we want to see using the, the way we've described the iPhone, if in any way it relates to Joseph and if that's, that's what helped him thrive. Because once we understand what an iPhone is, number one, it's for communication. Number two, this was the nature of the person who created it. This is what their mind was thinking. And then number three, we understand the purpose then we utilize it effectively. You know, when you when you buy an iPhone, you just don't text. You just don't, you know, call or leave it at home like a home phone. No, you utilize it to the utmost. You're like, I need to get my money's worth because iPhones are not cheap. So you're like, I need to get my money's worth out of this thing. So that's the importance of understanding identity. Because if we understand, what something is, the nature of the person who created it, and the purpose for which it is created for, we utilize it effectively. We, um, we, don't, we don't waste time with it, we value it, because we understand that this is why it was created. So we want to see if this is what was happening to Joseph. Because if this is what was happening to Joseph, then we have cracked the code. All right, guys back to our investigation so we want to see did joseph understand who he was did he understand his maker and did he understand the purpose for which he was created so let's start with the first part did joseph understand who he was so like i said we can um differentiate an iphone from an android because of the characteristics of an iphone now we want to see was joseph able to differentiate himself from the Egyptians. It's very interesting that he actually was able to, because in different parts of Genesis, especially Genesis 39, he talks about, uh, actually it's someone else who identifies him as that. Potiphar's wife is like, uh, it's the, the Hebrew slave that you brought into my house did X, Y, Z. And then while in prison, Joseph actually identifies himself as a Hebrew. He says, um, he was telling one of his friends who, who was going to be released. He's like, when you get out, you know, please remember me. Because I was taken from my own land, from the land of the Hebrews. So he identified himself as a Hebrew. So why is this important? Remember, when you are looking at an iPhone and... Um, an Android, so I'm going to get an Android here. I'm an owner of an Android. So you have an iPhone and you're differentiating it with an Android. So Joseph was saying he was a Hebrew. We're going to say all Hebrews are like iPhones. So a Hebrew in the midst of Androids. So the, the iPhone is like telling all the Androids, like guys, I was taken from the land of iPhones. So right there joseph is distinguishing himself he understands that he's a hebrew he's not identifying himself as a slave he's not identifying himself like oh i was my dad's last born as you know the position of where he was born he wasn't identifying himself as a as an egyptian he wasn't trying to fit in but rather he was identifying himself as a hebrew and when we look at the meaning of the word hebrew hebrew means a foreigner so someone who has been called out of a land and hebrew was first used of joseph's great grandfather abraham this is going to be very interesting because he was called out when you look at genesis 12 the Lord called him out and said, leave your father's land, leave everything about you know your home and go to the land that I will show you. 
So right off the bat, Abraham became a Hebrew. He became a foreigner. So this is what Joseph is identifying himself with. I am a foreigner, but more than just a foreigner, this is a foreigner who has been called out. Remember Abraham, he was called out when the Lord called him, says, come out from your people, from your father's land, go to the land that I will show you and I will bless you. I will make you into a great nation and you know I will I will make your name great and you will be a blessing to others so this foreigner is not just a foreigner but it's a foreigner who's attached to a big promise so this is how this is you know I'm I'm I'm, I'm just like this is where the name Hebrew comes from so this was not just any kind of foreigner but this was a foreigner who had a promise and a mighty promise attached to his name and this is how Joseph was identifying himself he's like I was taken I was stolen he actually uses those words he says I was stolen from the land of the Hebrews I was stolen from my own land so this is how Joseph identified himself. So remember, we're still on the first question. Did he understand who he was? So it seemed like Joseph had an understanding of who he was. He says, I was stolen from the land, from my land, you know, the land of the Hebrews. So he was stolen from his inheritance. So anyway, we will not go into all of that. What I just wanted to bring out is that Joseph was able to identify that, no, I'm not a slave. Just because I'm in a land where I've been put as a slave doesn't mean that I'm a slave. And no, just because I was my dad's last born, I was suffering when I was, you know, with my family, doesn't mean that that is my identity. I am a Hebrew. I am a Hebrew. And then you look at what that name carries. Then you start understanding why was Joseph was uh, Joseph was identifying himself. He was carving out a niche for who he was. I am not just any person. I am a Hebrew and who I am carries a lot. So this, so this shows that first of all, Joseph actually understood who he was. So the second question, did Joseph understand his creator? So remember when we talked about the iPhone, when we talked about the iPhone, when we we're trying to understand who the maker is, we found that it's important to understand his nature. What kind of nature did Steve Jobs have? He was innovative, he was excellent, and he was very in tune with people's needs. So, did Joseph understand his maker? So the answer is actually yes, he did. So interesting that Joseph, the way Joseph referred to God, so when we read the Bible as we have it today, it's written in English and you know so many other translations, but in the original language that the Bible was written in, wherever Joseph mentions God, he's actually using the word Elohim. And that word Elohim actually means creator. So Joseph was referring to God as his creator. Like, Elohim is the word used in Genesis 1 when they talk about God creating everything. Like Steve Jobs creating iPhones. I'm not saying Steve Jobs is God, but follow the, let's follow, you know, <laughs> that was just my mind. But like just to keep with, um, with the flow of object lesson. So it's like an iPhone understanding that, hey, not just anyone made me but this is my creator steve jobs is my creator so that is what joseph understood so first of all he called god elohim so god in the old testament i mean uh throughout the bible he's referred to with so many names you know we have jehovah nisi we have jehovah rapha every single name that god is given has a particular meaning and in this instance of the story of joseph Elohim actually means my creator, the person who made this product. So every time he's referring to God, he's like, this is the person who made this product. This is the person who created me. So one, he did understand that God was his creator, which means, you know, if Steve Jobs is the creator of the iPhone, then Steve Jobs has the blueprint of the iPhone. Steve Jobs can 
Steve Jobs is able to intervene into the life of the iPhone at whatever time he wants, you know, all that stuff. So when someone understands the creator and starts understanding his nature, then he understands that this person who has made me, you know, there's some things that he can do about my life because he made me. So let's see how Joseph now um, built this understanding because he understood that God was Elohim, he was creator. So we're going to go to the three aspects that we um, understood about Steve Jobs. So first of all, Steve Jobs was innovative. Uh, secondly, he was excellent. And thirdly, he was caring. He was very in tune of people's needs. So as I said, innovative is one who makes, tries to make things better. So it seemed like Joseph understood that God was innovative. Why do I say this? Because of different circumstances in Joseph's life and how he looked at God. So when, when Joseph, and um, we're going to speed, speed a little bit into his life. So when he finally is removed from prison and he's given a wife and you know he has babies, uh, two boys, it's very interesting the names that he gives them. He calls the he calls one Ephraim and he calls another one Manasseh. So he says, I'll call this one Manasseh because God, Elohim, has erased, has helped me forget my past and the pains and the toils that I went through when I was, you know, when I was in my past. So right there, he's understanding that God is a God who makes things better for us. He has a way of erasing things that have been so tormenting to us. So, you know, like in the second part of this series, we questioned, like, how was he able to forget all that stuff? How was he able to bypass all this stuff? So right here, right here we're finding the answer that Joseph actually did not do it of, of himself. He wasn't able to forget it of himself. He says, it is God who helped me forget. And that word is like erased. It's like God had a way of just um, going to that painful wound and just making, you know, treating it and taking care of it until it healed. So he's like, my God, I call this child Manasseh. Because that Manasseh, the, the name Manasseh means God helped me forget my toil and my pain of my past. And it's true of God because other verses in the Bible talks about God saying, you know, forget the former things. I mean, he's the one who enables people according to what we're seeing in Joseph's life. So secondly, he calls his, his other child Ephraim. And Ephraim, he says, I call him Ephraim because God has helped me thrive, helped me be fruitful in a foreign land. So remember, we are still on the aspect and nature of God, Elohim, Joseph's creator. As